in the world of design speak can be quite cruel. Interesting great Nate here. He's got this problem on the left where his 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 corners are not rounded. They're, he's ending up with sharp corners. Where we've got Crispy Co on the right here trying to come up with this geometry. Hey, what's up, everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're going to take a look at an epic CAD vs. CAD battle. This one comes from our 2024 World Championship of 3D CAD speed modeling, and it features our final four runners in that tournament. So these guys are some of the fastest in the world. But if you want to challenge yourself and see if maybe you're even faster than these wizards, you absolutely can. When I reveal the 2D drawing, you can take a screen capture and then you can attempt to model it right along with these guys using any 3D CAD system. Try to calculate the correct mass and at the end of each of these battles, I will show you the correct mass on screen. So if that sounds good to you, hit the like button. Be sure to share this video with some other CAD enthusiasts and let me know down in the comments, what did you think about this model and what was your favorite part of this CAD vs CAD battle. Guys, you are all in for a treat. Aaron C, you are in for a treat as well. Let's learn a little bit about our runners. We got a lot of updated facts about our runners. So maybe you could just read off a few of these, Tom, just to get started here. We could start out maybe with Great Nate. Great Nate is a young, a young blood. Yeah, uh, he's used Fusion 360 for seven years, still in high school. Uh, loves playing volleyball and Chris Pico we'll save some for later is a senior product design engineer at quadlock quadlockcase.net nice first learned SolidWorks in 2004 after two weeks of AutoCAD my first paid design job was modeling a bath for a client's design competition entry in 2006 wow all right Tom studio audience this is the moment we've all been waiting for. You guys have the have the thing, so you guys you guys know what it looks like. Good luck to Great Nate 08, our number one seed in this tournament. Very young, a youngster, still in high school, going up against Chris Biko. He's got a lot of experience. CSWE SolidWorks, Clash of Fusion versus SolidWorks. Good luck to both. And here we go. This very first CAD battle begins in three, two, one. Go! What is the total mass of this multi-body part or assembly in XXX.X kilograms? Some sort of picnic yeah, table. Yeah, that's going to be a heavy picnic table regardless if it's up there in three places. Yeah. Both of our runners are looking at this print. You can see that this the, the tubing for this, what's shown in blue, is actually tubes. It's hollowed out. Both of our runners are grabbing a screen capture. They're really fast with grabbing the screen capture. So let's jump over and see how they approach this challenge. So one thing that I'm sure you noticed right away on this one, Tom, is that the uh, the challenge features what we would call uh, multi-body or assembly design. Multiple parts all working together made of different materials. Now, I know that Chris B. Co. has done a lot of design and I wasn't really sure what, uh, what Nate, great Nate's experience would be in this arena, but Last time he actually had a similar, a picnic bench, a very similar challenge, and he flew through it. Hmm. So very interested to see how Great Nate 08 handles this. We got Great Nate 08 on the left using Fusion 360. We got Crispy Co on the right using SolidWorks. I like Crispy Co drawing that entire upper section right away. Yeah. Yeah, actually, these are my favorite type of picnic tables, the ones that had the seats built into them. Yeah, with the tubes? Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. I agree. John in the chat says, wow, tier six right off the bat. Yeah, let's <laughs> go. Let's go indeed. Mesa makes in the chat saying, get it, Nate. Yes, indeed. And Will is here today. Will from Brazil. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us. This is very exciting. Very interesting to see Crispy Co. approaching this with the uh, bench seats kind of all in the same, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Oh, look at that. Using yeah. That was an offset. He used the offset option when creating that extrusion. That was a good move. So you'll notice if if we look at the print again, just for a moment here, you'll notice that part of this challenge is that the tubes from the, the frame overlap with the print. So let me just bring up the, the 2D print here just for a moment. So you'll see that the tubes from the frame, they, they intersect with the uh, ABS table top and bottom. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is that part of the cha the challenge is that the runners have to remove that material. So this oh, really is wow. like what we would call an in-context design where you're designing two parts so that they can function together. That's very interesting. Wow. 
Oh, this is a very close, close run. What is the... Oh, okay. So, materials ABS, right? Yep, so we've got the, the two different materials on this, uh, on this challenge. The material for the tabletop is ABS. Mm -hmm. The material for the tubing is plain carbon steel. Interesting. And you can see here, yeah, Tom, Tom and I have a, a printout that we're looking at. So when we look down, we're looking at that printout. But one of the things that's kind of challenging is figuring out where the offset distance needs to be for these uh, different components. Like particularly when you've got tubes like this, a lot of times it's it's easy when you have the center line dimension. But when the dimensions are given as like the overall outside or overall inside, you have to do a lot of math in your head. So I really like what Chris Pico is doing there on the right, where he's creating offset geometry. See, these, these uh, construction lines are offset geometry, and then he's just measuring to those. Mm. That's a pro move. Yeah. On the left, we see Great Nate 08 using Fusion and using, using uh, I think he's using what's called a, a tube or a pipe function in Fusion. I know I had Fusion Phil as my co-commentator a couple of weeks back, and he uh, really you know, gave us a, a nice lesson on using the pipes in Fusion 360 and what you can really get away with in that. And so he actually even made a tutorial on one of the challenge models that came up. Oh, that's awesome. I feel like we need some music here. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I think I'm going to try and get a speaker plugged in. I have a... I can just run it right into my outlet here, so... And that'll give us the background music that the audience is hearing, too. Okay. Do you want me to see if I can handle that? No, no, no. Just keep talking. Okay. So really, <laughs> really, really going together well here. Uh, how does everybody here a fan of picnic tables? Oh huh? yeah, picnic tables. They're good times, all right? Oh okay. Not a fan of picnic tables back there, but that's okay. That's okay. I'm a fan of sweet music. Same. So. We got to get some music going here for the audience. Wow. So Chris, Chris Bico on the right, kind of struggling with that, that tubing, getting that tubing in there. But Great Nate 08 on the left, also taking an interesting approach on this thing. This, this one could really go either way. I, I see what Chris Bico is doing there. He's kind of trying to create the layout for the, um, the overall pipe information. I think he's going to end up using that to do a convert entities and do a 3D sketch and then, and then probably... Actually, I probably shouldn't give it away. I don't want to be yeah. <laughs> giving him the full playbook. <laughs> Get a little too excited here. This is a tough design. Yeah, very tough design. I see. There we go. There we go. Bass music. This is good designing music. This is great designing yeah. music. It's like we're just getting warmed up. Mr. Alex in the chat coming in with a super, super chat. Thank you, Mr. Alex, for the super chat. It says, great 3D model. Mm hmm. The truth is, guys, I was considering holding some of these off for the the absolute finals. I wasn't sure if I should put them all into one pool, or if I should maybe like split them up. But I don't like I like when the Wheel of Fate has absolute control over the outcome of our tournaments. Yeah. And so I just decided, you know what? I agree with that. Roll. I agree with that one hundred percent. Just like real life, you know. Yeah. Fate can sometimes be cruel. Yep. But in a world of designs. In the world of designs, fate can be quite cruel. Yeah. Interesting great Nate here. He's got this problem on the left where his 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 corners are not rounded. They're, he's ending up with sharp corners where we've got Chris Bico on the right here trying to come up with this geometry. You yeah. notice that the chat has really gone down as well. That's probably because most of our regulars in the chat are trying to model this as well. Oh, this is yeah. one of the things that people really enjoy doing when they watch this tournament is they try to model it and see if they can't come up with the fastest possible time and even maybe beat some of the people who are running. In fact, there's a, a special signal that you can do when that occurs. You can you can say, I got it. 
And you can let everybody in the chat know that you got it. Oh, okay. I see that you've got it. Yep. Got it. Got it already, guys. Congratulations. Mm. That reminds me, as these guys are coming through and trying to come up with their answer, I'm going to need that oh, final yeah. sheet. Now, this is where things get really interesting, guys, because this is where we end up having uh, a little bit of a challenge in SolidWorks. You can see what Chris Biko is doing is he has to now remove the material from the, the tubes. He has to remove that from the picnic tables, but unfortunately in SolidWorks, you can only do that one body at a time. So this is something that is going to, you know, be a bit of a challenge for him. It looks like what he did was he made a copy of the bodies. That was a pro move, a pro workaround. Very impressive that he knew what to do right away. Very interesting. If he earns this point, he will truly have earned it. See, a lot of times what happens when you do that is you end up with the... the, the now, again, I don't oh. want to say too much. Pump the brakes. Pump the brakes here a little mm -hmm. bit. Aaron C is here, says, what's good, everybody? Better late than never. What I miss... We picked the very the hardest model in the entire lot for the very <laughs> first model, Aaron C. That's what you missed. So we see Crispy Co. Looks like Crispy Co. is possibly we might possibly see an answer here from Crispy Co. He's looking at he's looking at everything. He's trying to make sure he doesn't do a, a an error with the, the decimal places here, changing over from grams, which you normally use, over to kilograms. Uh-oh. And Chris Pico coming in with an answer. 157.3. And that is correct. Wow, Crispy Co. My goodness. That was a great run. That was not an easy model. Very, very impressive. Crispy Co. GG to Crispy Co. Wow, wow, wow. Nice job. Good job, guys. GG to the winner. Guys, give a GG to Crispy Co. Well done. Congratulations, Crispy Co., but it is not over yet. You got to win two in order to move on. Oh, okay. Hey, don't let your guard down again. Great neat. Oh, wait, may I have that pen for some reason? <laughs>